Today's lesson is called Turkey's Hagia Sophia, from past to present. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going to be discussing a famous tourist site in Turkey, the country of Turkey. There in the Middle East, I think、uh, most of it is in Asia. A little part of it is in Europe, but、uh, maybe you've been there before, maybe you haven't. But if you have been to Turkey, you may have been to a famous landmark called. Hagia Sophia, and millions of tourists go there every year. But there has been some controversy concerning this site recently. Yes, the Hagia Sophia is what we're going to be talking about today. But also notice how in the title it says here, "From past to present." So we're talking about this today, this particular. Thing, the Hagia Sophia, but we're also talking about its history. We're not just talking about now, what's going on currently. No, no, no. We'll get into the past as far as this building is concerned, what it's like now, and maybe we'll even delve into what the future holds for this building. But let's not get ahead of ourselves for now. Yes, the Hagia Sophia. It's very old. It's very beautiful. And it's in Turkey, and yes, Turkey is a country there. It's kind of in between Europe and Asia. Roger already talked about that. It's on something called the Anatolian Peninsula. A N A T O L I A N. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start talking about the Hagia Sophia, one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. Turkey's Hagia Sophia. From past to present, millions of tourists visit Turkey's Hagia Sophia every year. The 1,500-year-old building not only boasts beautiful architecture, but also holds special meaning for both Christians and Muslims. A recent decision to turn this museum back into a mosque has caused a stir around the world. 大家好，第一部分我们看到名词 architecture。指建筑物样式、风格、建筑物、建筑学，像是 The style of architecture was popular around a hundred years ago. 这种建筑风格大约在一百年前相当盛行。或是 Poland is famous for its architecture. 波兰的建筑相当有名。再举一个例子 ，Franklin was inspired to study architecture after visiting Italy. 意大利之旅促使 Franklin 下定决心研读建筑学。另外，补充这个字的形容词。Architectural, A R C H I T E C T U R A L. Architectural, 指建筑的，建筑学的。我们可以说 The building's design was not up to the neighborhood's architectural standards. 这栋大楼的设计不符合该社区的建筑标准。Okay, so as we can tell in the first part of our lesson, there's a little bit of controversy concerning this building at the present time. Now, millions of tourists visit Turkey's Hagia Sophia every year. That much is certain. It's a very popular place. I doubt they've had that many people this year because of COVID-19. But I'm sure more people will go back there when this nasty virus is part of history. And the 1,000 Five-hundred-year-old building.、Uh, you could also say the fifteen-hundred-year-old building. Not only boasts beautiful architecture, but also holds special meaning for both Christians and Muslims. Okay, so in this sentence, we've got the word "boast." Which、uh, means to brag sometimes. Hey, look at me! Look at this expensive car that I'm driving. I own five private planes. I own properties in all the major cities of the world. Aren't I wonderful? Yes, that is boasting. You could also say bragging. But here they're not really bragging about this, although it is something they can be proud of. It boasts beautiful architecture, which means it has this thing, and it is something they could boast about if they wanted to. Yeah, they have it, and it's nice. They're proud of it, and you know what? If I were Turkish, okay, I would be proud of this building as well. Okay, this is one of the great buildings on planet Earth. It's get this, one thousand five hundred years old. That is super 
cool. Anyways, it says here that this building not only boasts or has beautiful architecture, but also holds special meaning for both Christians and Muslims. Yeah, I believe that the Hagia Sophia at one point was a church and then it became a mosque. It went back and forth, but it's important for both Christians and Muslims. By the way, here we do have the word architecture to talk about. When we're talking about architecture for the most part, we're talking about nice buildings. Okay, specifically though, we're talking about the design of those particular buildings, how they're constructed, how they're built, so on and so forth. So when we say that this particular building has some beautiful architecture, you might want to go there and actually study the way that this building has been put together or built. There you go. That's the idea behind this word architecture. Architecture. And don't make the mistake of using the word architecture to refer to the building itself. It's talking about the actual design of the building and the materials it used, etc., etc. I could say, I really admire the architecture of Taipei 101. Or I could say, it's an architectural miracle. But here, yes, this uh, structure in Turkey has beautiful architecture, but also it holds special meaning for a couple of religions here. We've got Christians and Muslims. Of course, Christians follow Jesus Christ and Muslims follow Muhammad. And a recent decision to turn this museum back into a mosque has caused a stir around the world. A church is for Christians, and a mosque is for Muslims. And they want to turn it back into a mosque, which means it was a mosque before, and it's not a mosque now, so they want to turn it back into a mosque. If you turn something into something, you change what it is into something else. If you're a magician, you might change someone into a chicken, for example. But here they're going to turn it not only into a mosque, but they're going to turn it back into a mosque. And because of that decision, it has caused a stir around the world. There you go. There's some controversy here, okay? That's what it means to cause a stir. You introduce a controversial topic, okay? People can really get behind this one way or another. They get emotional over it. They might argue over it, so on and so forth. That's the idea here when you cause a stir. We're not stirring a drink, but it's kind of like that. You might be riling people up by doing something. And here, apparently, this is causing a stir. I believe originally this building was a Christian church. Then it became a mosque. Then it became a museum, I believe, and now it's being changed back into a mosque, and apparently some people don't like this, and this might be controversial for some people. So we're saying here that it's causing a stir, and not just in Turkey. Apparently it's causing a stir around the world. How interesting. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. The building's name, Hagia Sophia in Greek or Hagia Sophia in Turkish, means divine wisdom. It was built in the 6th century by Byzantine Emperor Justinian I, who wanted to create the world's largest and grandest church in his capital, Constantinople. The building's centerpiece, a huge domed ceiling, is said to have been inspired by a dream the emperor had. Inside, the walls were decorated with Christian artwork, it was once believed that European kings had a divine right to rule the land. I felt a divine presence when I stood in the church. Centerpiece. Of, race relations are the centerpiece of the politician's political platform. take center stage, human rights took center stage at the conference of world leaders. put, front and center. The band puts its saxophonist front and center. Dome. 
课文中的 domed 为过去分词做形容词用，指圆顶的、圆顶状的，像是 The domed ceiling inside the church is painted with scenes from the Bible. 教堂里的圆顶状天花板是用圣经里的故事绘制而成。另外，这个字也可以是名词，意思是圆顶。举例来说 ，The dome of the building is made of marble. 这座建筑的圆顶是大理石造的。Here in the second part, it says the building's name Hagia Sophia in Greek or Hagia Sophia in Turkish means divine wisdom. So yeah, Hagia Sophia or Hagia Sophia. What does that mean? Well, it means the same thing in different languages. In a Turkish, Hagia Sophia means divine wisdom, and divine means having to do with God. Anyways, yeah, you could either call it the Hagia Sophia in Greek, or the Hagia Sophia in Turkish. The pronunciation is quite similar here, so just make note of the spelling here. It's a little bit different, but yes, they refer to the same building. These two terms do, and they also have the same meaning. Anyways, more on the Hagia Sophia. All right, remember we're going from past to present, so let's start at the beginning. About 1,500 years ago, it says the Hagia Sophia. It was built in the sixth century by Byzantine Emperor Justinian the First, who wanted to create the world's largest and grandest church in his capital, Constantinople. Now, I do not believe Constantinople exists anymore. The city still exists, though. It's now called Istanbul, I believe, though now. This is an old name for Istanbul, but in any case, here, yeah, it's a very big church, or at least it was, and it was built by the Emperor Justinian the First, who was an emperor in the Byzantine Empire. That's what Turkey was at that time, part of the Byzantine Empire. And the building's centerpiece, a huge domed ceiling, is said to have been inspired by a dream the emperor had. So that's the main feature of the building: the centerpiece. The centerpiece, of course, is the focus, the main thing that people pay attention to.、You、could have a centerpiece on your dining table, for example, something that everybody looks at and they go, "Wow, that's really cool!" There are、uh, really interesting candles or something. A centerpiece there. But、uh, yeah, that's the main feature here. That's what people. People take pictures mostly of that dome there, or the huge domed ceiling. Domed here just means something that's round and on top of a building. I think there's a domed ceiling over the museum down there in. 228、uh, Peace Memorial Park. There, the、uh, museum there has a dome. It has a domed ceiling, I believe. It has a dome, or it's domed. And when you're thinking of a dome, just think of a building. And the roof of that building is half a sphere. Okay, like take a basketball and cut it in half. That particular shape, you could call that a dome, or that's dome-like. And there's a huge dome in the Hagia Sophia. It's super important to that particular structure. It really stands out. It's the centerpiece. It's the central element. It's the most important thing to be found when you go in there. Now, as far as this huge domed ceiling is concerned. Apparently, it was inspired by a dream the emperor had. So the emperor there, Justinian, went to sleep one night, had a dream, dreamt about this particular dome, and he woke up and said, "You know what? I am going to get this thing done. I am going to build this thing, or have people build it for me, because I am inspired now. That dream has filled me with the urge to do this." Yes, inspired. You got some ideas when you saw this thing, or when you heard something, like、uh, when I heard Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. I was inspired to learn how to play the violin. You could say because you thought it was such a great piece of music, and you thought, "Hmm, I'd like to do that too." I was inspired by that symphony, and inside. The walls were decorated with Christian artwork, maybe some illustrations from Bible stories and things like that. There you go. I've seen some of this artwork, not live, of course. I've seen it online and stuff like that. There are beautiful, beautiful mosaics to be found in this particular church. It's architecturally significant, filled with beautiful art. It has that great dome, the Hagia Sophia. Is so cool. It's super awesome. Anyways, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll start wrapping up part one of our lesson on the Hagia Sophia. After Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Empire in 1453, Hagia Sophia was turned into a mosque by the new Muslim rulers. 
Four minarets were added outside, and artwork of Christian icons was covered with Arabic calligraphy inside. In 1934, the first Turkish president, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, turned the building into a museum in an effort to make Turkey more secular. Since then, it has become Turkey's top tourist attraction. However, the building has had another change of identity this year. At one time, the British Empire ruled about one fifth of the world's population. The wedding invitations were handwritten in very beautiful calligraphy. Even though the restaurant is located next door to the temple, it is a secular building. Okay, let's talk about the third part of our lesson and continue to talk about the history of Hagia Sophia in Turkey there. After Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Empire in 1453, Hagia Sophia was turned into a mosque by the new Muslim rulers. So the Ottoman Empire was controlled by Muslims, and an empire, of course, is any kind of a political entity, some kind of nation or kingdom that is ruled by an emperor, like the Roman Empire, for example. Now we've got the Ottoman Empire, and well, they didn't want this Christian building with Christian symbols, so they said, hey, let's uh, have some new artwork here. Let's kind of make it into a mosque instead for our Muslim followers. Anyways, they decided to take the Hagia Sophia and turn it into a mosque, and they added some things there to improve it a little bit and to make it a mosque. Get this, four minarets were added outside and artwork of Christian icons was covered with Arabic calligraphy inside. By the way, when we're talking about calligraphy here, we're talking about fancy writing, fancy script writing. Yeah, of course, you all know about that here in Taiwan with Chinese calligraphy, you know, when you have the brush and you paint some really wonderful Chinese writing, that is calligraphy, fine writing, but it also exists in other languages and especially in the Arabic language with their written alphabet, it's quite beautiful as well. So, of course, if you are at a mosque, you're going to uh, see minarets and those are kind of tall slender towers where there's a guy inside it calling out for prayer at various times of the day. And, of course, Christian icons would refer to things that have to do with Christianity. Pictures of Jesus, for example, the cross. You get the idea. Now, in 1934, the first Turkish president, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, okay, so that was the president of Turkey, the first one way back in 1934, and he turned the building into a museum in an effort to make Turkey more secular. So that's what the president did. He decided, nah, this should not be a mosque here. We should make it something more secular, which basically refers to something non-religious, okay? We talk about secular music, for example. That's music that does not refer to anything religious. A lot of religious classical music was produced, say, by Bach, for example, but he also had some secular music as well. So this was in an effort to make Turkey more secular, in other words, more even for different uh, religions so that they could freely practice and not feel persecuted. So yeah, in an effort, you could also say to try. There you go. He tried to make Turkey more secular. Now, in the United States, there is a separation of church and state, but apparently back in the day, with Turkey, long ago, there wasn't that separation. Maybe the church and the government were kind of intertwined. 
And that's not a good thing in some situations. That's what Ataturk thought here. So he wanted to make Turkey more secular, less religious when it comes to governmental matters. Now, since then, it has become Turkey's top tourist attraction. However, the building has had another change of identity this year. How about that? Now, before we take a break here, let's talk about the word attraction. In this particular situation, an attraction is something that attracts tourists. It brings them in. They want to come to your country because they want to see this awesome thing, this attraction. Like in the United States, the Grand Canyon or the Statue of Liberty, those are famous tourist attractions. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. The building's centerpiece, a huge domed ceiling, is said to have been inspired by a dream the emperor had. Be said to 加原形动词是表达说，据说怎么样怎么样。像我们可以表达说 ，The castle is said to be haunted， 就是说，据说那座城堡有闹鬼。好，那如果据说的事情是发生在更早之前，这时候呢，不定词片语 to 加原形动词，我们要改用不定词完成式，也就是变成 to have 加上过去分词 pp。好，那这时候句型就会变成主词。加上 be said to have， 再加 pp。像课文句子里面，灵感受到启发是更早发生的事，所以它用不定词完成式 to have been inspired 来表达。那我们也来造个例句 ：The actress is said to have gotten engaged to her boyfriend in April。据说那位女演员在四月的时候已经跟男朋友订婚了。那么订婚这件事是更早发生的事，所以我们这边用 to have gotten engaged。好，那顺便补充一下，我们也可以用 it is said 再加 that 子句来表达句说怎么样。像刚刚的例句，我们可以把它改成 it is said。That the actress got engaged to her boyfriend in April. 那如果我们想要把课文句子用这个句型改写，那会变成说 ，It is said that the building's centerpiece, a huge domed ceiling, was inspired by a dream the emperor had. 好。再来，我们看到课文句子里面，它用到插入语 a huge domed ceiling 来补充说明，去解释说圣索菲亚大教堂最吸引人的地方就是它那巨大的圆顶天花板。好 ，dome 这个字当名词，它是指圆顶。那么当动词呢，就可以表达用圆顶覆盖、形成圆顶的。只是文中是用过去分词 domed 来形容是圆顶的、圆顶状的。其实，在中世纪的时候呢，像德文的 do。M 和意大利文的 D U O M O 这样的字呢，是用来指大教堂。我们知道大教堂建筑常常会有这种圆顶、穹顶的构造。那么后来英文就开始用 dome 这个字来指圆顶。我们顺便来学这个 D O M 这个字根的语义哦。好 ，D O M 它具有房屋、房舍的意思。像 domestic 它的字根 D O M 表示房屋，那么字尾的 I C 是形容词字尾。Domestic 就可以用来形容家庭的，也可以形容是国内的、本国的。好，还有一个字是 domicile，d o m i c i l e， 它的字根 d o m 表示房屋，那么 i c i l e 表示居住，合在一起 domicile 就表示住处、住所。这个单字主要是法律用字，像如果表达说 report one's change of domicile， 就是指说要通报更改住所。好，以上是今天重点整理。回顾简单字吧。Boast. The building boasts the fastest elevator in the world. Architecture. The Colosseum in Rome is the most famous example of Roman architecture. Divine. He visited the temple every day to pray for divine blessings. Inspire. The novel was inspired by the author's own experiences. Empire. In history class, the students learned about the collapse of the Roman Empire. Calligraphy. Chinese calligraphy is an art form that has been practiced for centuries. Attraction. 
All of the major attractions are within walking distance of the hotel. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.